This is War Stories, a cybersecurity podcast where we extract the best stories from the field of penetration testing. Your host is Zach Davis, experienced cyber and physical security tester. War Stories is brought to you by Cyber Coffee, engineered and roasted to keep you hacking the planet all day and night. Give it a try at drinkcybercoffee.com and use promo code WAR10 to save 10%. Enjoy the show. All right. Welcome to another episode of War Stories, sponsored by Cyber Coffee. If you hack things and you like coffee, you really have to check it out. It's delicious stuff. Made by, uh, roasted by a hacker as well. Uh, we got another 7X guest here today, Mr. Tally. Thanks for being on the show. Happy to have you here. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Uh, so I think you know the format. I think you got to tell us who you are, what you're about. All right. So right after high school, I went to uh, Penn State for their security and risk assurance, so SRA. Um, they had a track specifically for cybersecurity. The requirements were much more suited to what I actually wanted to learn. I had classes like forensics, networking, rather than like physics, calc too. It was like, I, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't going to be like a full-time developer anyway. I wanted to get into IT in general and then security in, in specific. So it was like development wasn't necessarily the the way to get started but it is for some people sure then i know you did some big four time and we were both at productivity at a time so (laughs) take me through that timeline so for a couple years i did consulting in various roles again offensive and then i took a break for a couple years um because i worked at a company that ran their own like mssp service so they're providing monitoring and endpoint monitoring services and during that time, they didn't really have anybody who was sort of just like focused on helping develop and maintain some of just like alerting. And um, I did about, I think, three years of that, three to four years. So I got pretty familiar with like Sims and EDR products and stuff like that. And then when 7X got started, I was like, oh, time to jump back in into the excitement. <laughs> yeah. Excitement of pen testing. Exactly, and yeah. Well, you've proved to be, a, I think, an especially valuable member of the team because you do have that blue team background. And when we have purple team assessments and other stuff like that, like there's just you have a whole lot of experience that's, I think, super important and kind of tells the other side of the story. A lot of pen testers spend all their time breaking stuff, but then, well, how do you actually fix this stuff? They're not going to be able to write a rule <laughs> or figure it out. And you did that a lot of that, which is cool. Yes, I would say a lot of people starting out nowadays are starting from that like analyst blue team role. So I think a lot of that will be helpful, especially when you're interacting with clients, because they will have have questions like, oh, you know, you did this attack, like, you know, why didn't we see it or how could we see it? What could we use to, you know, catch this in the future if this was actually a malicious event? So what do you got for us for a tool? Is it going to be a blue team tool or a red team tool? (laughs) Tool. I'm guessing it's a red team tool, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, in, uh, in, in the blue team world, I think there's a lot of tools and resources, same as, as, as the red side of things. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. So I know, uh, depending on the scenario, um, there's always one tool that I go back to in both internal and external assessments and it's, uh, go witness it, you know, there was a, a, a previous tool called eyewitness. This is a much better iteration built by, I think a completely different team. So it's definitely been a handy tool outside of, you know, all the popular AD related tools that um, I've been seeing a lot of, I would say, positive return from it because it tends to find things that are not AD related for me that end up getting me, you know, pathways in the environment that are not necessarily the, the common ones. Sure. So, so for our audience, uh, Go Witness is a tool that basically allows you to take um, port scan data or you can run, actually, I think you can end run scans with it natively too, but it'll go through a list of IP addresses and anytime it sees a web service, um, it, it basically takes a screenshot and puts it in a report for you. So instead of having to go out and browse to 5,000 IP addresses and on an internal pen test, it takes all the screenshots for you and then you can go through the report allows you to go and look for default passwords or an interesting web application you could potentially attack. So it's definitely a, a very valuable tool when you're, especially when you're dealing with big environments. I think most, most folks would recommend you like AD type tools for lateral movement and, you know, execution password dumping. But 
if you're focusing and just checking things outside of Active Directory, this is the quickest one to sort of just map out anything that has a web interface. So your good old printers, you know, the everyone's favorite Kyoceras that have uh, vulnerabilities to kind of let you dump credentials or pre-configured creds. You can find Jenkins that lets you self-register and get in and, you know, execute code on that underlying OS or in one of my Build more a, Apache Tomcat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, 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 the club that, you know, existed back in, you know, when I started is still around. You can still find some JBoss, some Jenkins, some Tomcats. Uh, I think on one of the most recent ones that I've done, um, we figure out that um, they were using, um, I guess, like monitoring and patch management software. And we found, a, I guess, the web UI. And the user we had access to had admin rights within that software once we logged in. And that gave us the domain path. There was also one where we found that our, again, had a user who had an admin on a ESXi or vCenter. Mm -hmm. So vCenter interface popped up, and we're like, whoa, we didn't even think about this. Like, ooh, cool. We have admin rights, so we could just pull a copy of DC if we want to at this point. So definitely worthwhile to just kind of look around the, not the perimeter technically, <laughs> around the environment to see, you know, what other interesting things. I know everybody focuses on AD, um, but we definitely had luck with, you know, the things that are still kind of the same that years ago, like IPMI and VNC, still run into that to this day, you know, like no credential yeah. VNC access or creds from IPMI that work elsewhere. So a lot of cool yeah, stuff. Default passwords. It's like I've seen uh, <laughs> somebody had a shirt I saw at a conference that said, like, there's no patch for human stupidity. And it's that, like the bad passwords are never going away no matter how good the technology gets. Like uh, if you don't change the passwords, you're going to be in you're going to be in trouble. Trying to go passwordless, right? I guess that, there yeah. is a push for that, but yeah, in the meantime, let's let's say for the next decade or so, I mean, let's say on my experience by, based on the past decade. I mean, they have improved. We've seen like passwords that are much longer, but they kind of still follow similar patterns of the shorter ones. So Whenever we get password hashes, it's still kind of the same approach of like, hey, capitalize the first letter, and then you know you have your word or a passphrase, and then some special characters and digits at the end, and voila, it's a password. So, so again, if you haven't seen Tally's blog post on how he built uh, the 7x password cracker, I would highly re recommend checking it out. I think at some point it might we have to do a whole podcast just talking about Probably. the cracker. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of cool stuff you do with <laughs> password cracking. I think we might make it into a presentation for some conferences and stuff too so potentially we'll have to come back and talk about the uh the password cracking at some point but um so with all the tools all the experience i think you got at least one if not two stories for us uh from what we were <laughs> discussing so wh right. what do you got for question three so for for a good story i'm gonna have to go back to the year of 2012 <laughs> you know predates my career. yeah this is Way this was when. uh this was my internship days. Um, Those are the MSO8067 days. Those were the days, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, this was, I would consider, my first like full from zero to domain admin internal pen test. Okay. So I'm I'm on site. Um, I don't have any previous experience outside of my training and my certification training. So I like, you know, I'm comfortable with networking. I'm comfortable with, you know, back in the day it was backtrack r3 i think r3 yeah Wh whatever i was on um cali wasn't a thing yet um so this is again, so you can tell when somebody really has been around for a while yeah, if you say backtrack and they're like what's they that? know what yeah. that is root tour like oh yeah. you've been around for a long time but if they only know about cali then it's like oh yeah been around a while yeah probably, i took but OSCP cp yeah. with with backtrack this was pre-cali i think it was uh Pen testing with backtrack, I think, was the name of the course instead of yeah. Cali. But um, I when I did OSCP, I think they had just moved to pen testing with Cali. Like it maybe been like six months. It yeah, was this, like the new. It wasn't too far. It was like a year or two, I think, after that yeah. that they started um, changing things around. But um, this is again um, somebody who has lots of training experience, but no real world experience, right? So I get on site. Um, as part of our, I guess, um, standard. I guess execution path, pattern path, whatever you the want to call it. The methodology. The um, methodology. We typically ran vulnerability scanners first, and then did all the manual stuff. So, following that, I did run that, and as I'm also poking around, I'm like, "Hey, one of the results came in, and it's like default creds for SQL." I know, still a thing. S A S A. Of course. 
Um, it gets better though, right? So it's uh, okay, SASA, right? So let's go look at it. Does it have you know XPCMD or something enabled for us to get execution? And this is back when you know Metasploit was still a thing. Uh, you can use a interpreter because this is 2012. Um, this is not nowadays where everything gets blocked because you know it's acting suspicious or whatever. So this was using just the, the modules built into Metasploit and Meterpreter. I got a shell on the box. This was my like first shell, and I'm like, so okay. just really quick for the for the non technical mm -hmm. audience, this is basically like a database that has a common, uh, common default password like we were talking about, which is SASA. And once you find a, a database that has SASA, there was basically like a, a functionality built into the database that would allow you to execute command uh, commands on that computer so you're and you could use metasploit to basically log in execute some commands and give you a reverse shell. yeah a reverse shell back and now you control that computer and that was like okay cool i'm on a box in a legitimate you know we're corporate environment yeah i know we're, we're hacking and we're, we're, <laughs> we're getting paid intern money for it but we're getting paid so i get on this box i'm like all right i have a, a shell i have local admin rates luckily because um the SQL service was running with uh, administrative privileges on the box. I'm like, what do I do next? Like, wh how do I, you know, this is a, you know, a finding, but like, how do I prove that I can go further? So I start looking into stuff and I call up my, uh, I guess my mentor at the time. And I'm like, hey, what do I do here? Like, I have, you know, I have access to one box. There's not really like shared credentials around. Like I tried. You know, tried the, like the local this admin is, and I'm pretty sure this was before Mimi Cats was a thing. So like this was WCE was was around, I think. Windows credential, credential editor. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the predecessor of Mimi Cats was around. So I'm pretty sure I dumped everything that I could from the box. I dumped the hashes and I was like, I can't like the couldn't pass the the admin hash because it wasn't actually re reused, which was pretty rare. It was like Yeah, we still see that. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I see more of that than, like, more often than not, but at least in like limited scenarios, but that wasn't the case. And then the, uh, I think the Windows credential editor did not, for whatever reason, have the plain text of uh, like anything useful. And I was like, all right, so I have I have access, and I'm like, I can see that there's a process running as a DA on this box, and I'm like, no maybe cats though. No so maybe cats. Not like you could just dump the. Well, WC of... was supposed to, but like in oh, my case. I didn't yeah. get any results. Maybe it wasn't working because of the OS, whatever, like 32 versus 64. Like, again, this is like newbie tally. I have no idea what I'm doing, sort of. Yeah. Uh, other than like I have a shell on the box and whatever Meterpreter allows me to do, right? Like hash dump. Um, so I'm like, all right, I need I need some advice or guidance. That, like, how do I prove that I can, you know, tackle the rest of Active Directory here? And my... Uh, <laughs> My coworker back in the day was like, all right, man, you know about tokens? I'm like, what's a token? Like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's like, well, start Googling it. There's impersonation delegation tokens. If there's a process running as like this user, you just impersonate it and use those privileges to just like go around the environment. Yeah. So once again, the, the token is when you log into a Windows computer uh, and it authenticates you, it creates these tokens, which can be tied to processes or other parts of the login session, but they can basically be used to go log into other systems if you have the rights there. So if the token's there, the high privilege administrator's there, you steal the token, you're in business. It's basically you're just taking over someone else's permissions who's already on that box, if you will. So I had no idea what he was talking about, but I started Googling this, and I'm like, I knew there was a thing called incognito in Metasploit because I read the Metasploit book back in the day that was like my, uh, I guess my training material because on the interview I got Metasploit questions. <laughs> this is how dated this um, the story is, right? And um, I was like, what does this do? Like, okay, incognito. Okay, there's these tokens. And I see a DA and it's like, oh, I can impersonate this user. It's like, what does that actually get me? Like, I didn't quite understand like what impersonation was at that point. I was like, okay, what? Well, let, let's just you know take this guy's token and let's impersonate him. So I do that, and I'm like, okay, it says I'm D8 right now. Is that actually what's happening? So I attempt to do the the good old, hey, um, let's do net, you know, 
group domain admins, let's just add a user in there and see what happens, like running in the meterpreter shell. That's how you're testing. Yeah. You see if you're actually, yeah, I'm going to add another one. <laughs> hey, this is 2012. I mean, like, what, what, yeah. this, this is, you know, nowadays I'd be like, well, we're also testing for your, you know, detection and response. We just added in a DA. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Right? Um, but again, um, straight up running that commands, adding a DA, and that worked. And I was like, wait a minute. This, is, this worked? Like, so I'm, I'm DA, like just off of that, like one box. So I, I call my, uh, my coworker back. I'm like, did, did, that's just, that, that's, that's how simple it was. It was literally just like hijacking this, this dude's process. Like, because I had admin level access on that box, he's like, yeah. So I go to the client. I'm like, Hey, let me, you know, this is what I did. And he's like, what SQL box? Like we don't run any SQL boxes. Like we only use like MS SQL for whatever they were using. I'm like, there's a SQL box right here. It turns out the SQL box wasn't actually theirs, but it was domain joined. The box belonged to a uh, physical security service provider that's three letters oh, configured with default SASA and, you know, XPCMD and everything else enabled. So it was a vendor box. So you was... so you got DA on your first pen test and you probably soured a large uh, relationship the client had. A with that little vendor. bit, yeah. maybe. Yeah, For that's... good reason. It's not like they were innocent, <laughs> but still... So that was, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was my first ever pen test that I did. Yeah, that, that's about as classic of a escalation path. Like that's just my first internship, twenty thirteen. Like yeah. that was just the kind of stuff. Every every uh, assessment, you were the golden days. Yeah, MSO the golden eight, days, everything was easy. Yeah. MSO eight, just point <laughs> and click, seven. and you got admin on a box. All right, I mean, Not we did have anymore, a but. couple more of those. I would say, like, um, what was the print nightmare one was very similar. It's like right before everyone patched it, that was yeah. like Active Directory certificate services. You can yeah. make the argument that one's still pretty, pretty there's, easy. There's new players out there in in terms yeah. of like what to what to pop. Yeah, cool. Well, I know if you're still following, there's one more. We're yeah. gonna call it the Mr. Robot story because it's pretty cool. But you want to tell that yeah. last one quickly? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Um, you know, people watch movies and TV shows a lot, and they're like, whoa, this is what, you know, hacking is, you know, the CSI scene of double typing and, like, crazy stuff like that. It's like, okay, the most realistic, when I thought about them, like, the most realistic of, like, movie style, you know, before Mr. Robot, because that was very much more realistic than anything else that's been there before, I would say um, this was around, I think, 2016. If anyone's familiar with the mouse jack vulnerability from... Uh, Bishop, was it Bishop Fox? or um, That sounds right. I don't remember off the top I, of my I, head. I, I'm sorry if I'm getting it, whoever uh, uh, did the research. Sorry if I'm attributing it wrong, but somebody published research about vulnerable um, uh, dongles where you can basically attack wireless mice and keyboards that were plugged yeah. in, and then you can inject keystrokes as if you were coming from like the keyboard. Yeah, so to set to this it. up, it, it was basically you could get this little... Um, I think it was USB or Blue USB Bluetooth dongle that you right. hook up to your laptop, and because all of these different wireless keyboards and mice were using Bluetooth with no authentication, you could, if you were in close enough proximity, you could just take over somebody's keyboard and send keystrokes into the computer. So obviously, what did hackers do? Well, they figured out really quickly we're going to open up a command prompt, write up a bunch of PowerShell to give a reverse shell, and then close the close the window yeah. before anybody noticed what happened and you could basically exploit someone's computer from across the room. So so like uh, in the in the TV like scene I pulled up to a client site and since wireless was part of the assessment I was just sitting in the parking lot in the morning before business hours and just like okay what am I up against you know and I'm like you know what let me let me set this tool up here I'm just going to try it and the cubes were in offices were right next to like the wall that I pulled up to and, you know, I have the terminal open, so this is definitely a movie. Like, you got your, you know, green text, black terminal, and I'm typing stuff out, and all of a sudden, so my payload for, I was using, it was, so it was, the, the vulnerability was mouse jack. Um, I think the tool that I was using was called Jacket. I think it's still around on GitHub. I, you probably, I don't know if it ever up, upgraded to the new Python, stuff like that, but it still works. I still have it working because I have the original VM, and that was purely set up just for that. Um, and I had a um, PowerShell Empire C2 callback script that would be typed out really fast as soon as somebody had their screen open and it worked. 
So I got extremely lucky because I'm sitting outside and the IT guy is literally behind the window sitting like right there, like, I don't know, like 30, 40 feet Having away morning, from me. Having morning coffee. Yeah, morning coffee. And I'm just sitting there and I like his, uh, the shades were slightly open and I'm like looking, his monitor is like unlocked. I'm like, this is perfect if the if he has something vulnerable. So I run my little thingy that scans, says there's a vulnerable device. I'm like, please. So I run the I run the tool and all of a sudden I saw like the command prompt, you know, like <laughs> yes. And I'm just sitting there and like waiting, waiting, and then like my empire like callback pops up. I'm like, yes. Sitting and, uh, in the parking lot through the about, windows. Yeah, about fifty like as I'm doing all this, I'm getting a call like fifteen, like, are you guys doing something? Cause I just had like a weird pop up on my computer. Like, oh, it's like, yep, I'm on your computer, dude. <laughs> He's like, What? Please come in and explain. I'm like, yeah, I'm outside, I'll be there. But that was that was like the most movie like scene I would say over my time that like pull up in the parking lot, pop someone else's computer without doing anything sort of. And then you already are, you know, internal access and you have privileges on the network because it's an IT person. So I was like, Whoa. best case scenario. I know. This was a yeah. couple years in. This was around I think 2016 and I was like, mouse check still works to this day by the way. You can still encounter things. You heard it here first people. You got to go back to the wired mice and keyboard. <laughs> Yeah, I know, dude. It's security. Yeah. Sweet. Well, Tally, this was great. Uh, I really enjoyed the stories. Took a walk down memory lane. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, thanks for joining us for another episode. Don't forget to check out some Cyber Coffee on the uh, 7X website. It's extremely delicious. And we'll see you for the next one. Thanks. thanks.